I'm Corbett Wall with DV Auction here with your feeder flash for Monday June the 7th brought to you in part by Joplin Regional Stockyards tell you what they got a busy late June and early July coming up and you want to get these dates marked on your calendar on June the 24th they're gonna have one of their Thursday value added specials those are always good uh, times to market your cattle if you've got them ready to sell and you've got them on a value added program uh, if you're a buyer, I tell you what, they sell larger groups of more uniform cattle there on those Thursday value added specials. Then July 1st at the Downstream Casino over in Quapaw, Oklahoma, just uh, right there west of Joplin, they've got the Big Bang Primetime Livestock Video. And I tell you what, that's the biggest one of the year. That'll be uh, top money for your cattle if you've got them, uh, you want to sell them from home and you don't want to bring them into the brick and mortar sale though but uh, they'll, they'll have a good run of cattle and have a lot of lots on there of green cattle coming off grass there at that time and uh, and they won't deliver until later in July or, or maybe later on in the late summer or early fall but they'll have the big buyers there guys and uh, it's as good as any video or any sale there is that big bang prime time video there July the first mark that down July the 5th, they're going to be closed uh, due to Independence Day holiday. And then July the 8th, they've got another Thursday special, the calf and yearling special there. So mark those down on your calendars and, and get prepared for those big marketing days. First thing I want to talk about is I want to say rest in peace to Memphis Charlie McVeigh. Uh, a lot of people don't know who he is. But if you've been in the cattle marketing business and paying attention, you know who Charlie McBain was. They called him Memphis Charlie because he was from Memphis and, and he was kind of a riverboat gambler uh, when it comes to uh, commodity futures trading. Uh, his, his company, McBain Trading, handled the risk management uh, and still does for a lot of your, your uh, bigger independent feeders. Uh, he's been very, very instrumental in the industry. Uh, he uh, was always a big one to, to, to uh, you know, deliver cattle, uh, take delivery of cattle on the board there, trying to keep that, uh, that uh, live cattle futures contract true. Uh, just been instrumental in a lot of things that has to do with cattle marketing uh, on a commercial basis and uh, he's, he's going to be missed. Uh, he's kind of been retired from, from active trading there and running that office in recent years but I tell you what, uh, I, I, if you've ever been to one of my talks before, uh, my presentations, I, I kind of rank him as one of the studs of the cattle industry and, and I, I, I rank him right up there with John Wayne and Clint Eastwood and a, another person in the beef industry that was very uh, monumental is Robert C. Atkins that developed the Atkins diet which has kind of turned into the keto diet now but you know he turned uh, the, the consumption of, of red meat uh, back up you know with his diet showing us that you can you can eat uh, steak and eggs for every meal and get smaller which is a wonderful thing to know of and it's the white stuff that gives you the big belly and and the fat butt but uh poor old memphis charlie i tell you what uh he uh he, he kind of had, had been in bad health for the last several years but uh people don't realize if you enjoyed the market of 2014 people don't realize how instrumental uh memphis charlie mcvain was of, of bringing that market to fruit and taking it to the level it went to but uh, sure gonna miss him. I was able to meet him uh, a few times and actually come to his office and sit down for a visit there. And watching Charlie McVeigh in his office on a busy trading day uh, was watch like watching a, a well-oiled machine there. But uh, gonna miss him and and, uh, and the whole industry is. Talk about what else is going on. Uh, I'm coming to you from Nashville, Tennessee, here at the Livestock Marketing Association's conference and and in. In conjunction with that, they always have the World Livestock Auctioneer Championship. That's something that I'm kind of into, and I think it's a lot of fun. Uh, I've gotten to see a lot of contacts. I got to, to shake hands and visit with Larry Schnell, the president of Livestock Marketing Association, and tell him how proud I am and how much I appreciate him putting together uh, that, that meeting of truce. 
that uh, has been instrumental in kind of getting the wheels turning on getting some things done in this industry that we've been needing to get done for a long time. Uh, it's, it's getting uh, more outspoken. We're getting the word to Washington, D.C. And, and some things are, are starting to happen. Talk to a lot of other people that are instrumental in that. Some other people that were at that meeting. Some other people that uh, are kind of in uh, the congressional world and, uh, and making some of those things happen. And they, they feel like that uh, something's going to indeed happen. Uh, we don't know exactly what it's going to be, and we don't know how the Packers are going to respond to it when it does, but uh, we're likely going to get a bill passed uh, that's going to force uh, more negotiated trade. Uh, you know, some of the people in the know that I've visited with out here in Nashville feel like that uh, the offices of, of Chuck Grassley and Deb Fisher are going to work together. And, and maybe come up with a hybrid that's got the bite of the 5014, but it's got the flexibility of the Cattle Market Transparency Act. And, and I tell you what, that would be wonderful. And then you got supporters on both sides. Put those supporters together, get some more that don't really know what we're, we're going against or what we're doing, and get them signed on. And if we all push at the same time, I think we can get something done here. But. Uh, that's, that's going to be a big, big deal. Uh, as far as the auctioneer championship, of course, i got my favorites and I've got my picks, but uh, 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 any of the, I think there's 29 here. Uh, Dean Edge, he's a friend of mine and, I mean, quite a character, and I miss seeing him here. He's from up in Canada, and, and due to the COVID restrictions, uh, you know, he's going to have to be quarantined and everything if he come down there and tried to go back home. So he was not able to make it down, and he would have been a competitor too because he's, he's one of the top auctioneers in the world, and uh, I, I miss him. And, and I'm talking livestock auctioneers. Uh, you know, when people say, well, what's the, 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 the big thing about a livestock auctioneer? Well, if you uh, sell real estate or you sell cars or you sell pots and pans or you sell produce or you sell uh, a lot of different things that they sell at auction, if you can auction those off, that's great. That still doesn't mean you can sell cattle. But if you can sell cattle, you can do all those other things pretty easy. It's, it's just the hardest thing that there is to do as far as keeping up with the money, uh, selling them by the pound, knowing your product, and, and, and there's just a lot of baseballs coming to you in an auction market, especially a commercial type auction sale where uh, most all these guys work uh, weekly. And uh, it's something that's near and dear to my heart. Uh, I'm going to give you, out of the 29 that are here, I'm going to give you uh, about five names. And, and you're, I, I believe that your champion will come out of there. I actually think it's Chuck Bradley's to lose from Montgomery Stockyards. He's a good friend of mine. He's an absolute beast behind the mic. And he's got the, uh, just an engaging personality that uh, is, is attractive to people. And and I think he's going to be it someday, and I think it might as well be Monday uh, and get it over with. Uh, but some other guys that could sure do it, like I said, any of them could win. But uh, Wade Leish is a friend of mine. He's he's due to win it, and he's very, very capable. Eric Dries, another friend of mine from out in Idaho, that uh, I think he's very capable of winning it. And, and both he and Wade uh, nailed their interview on Sunday, so uh, they've got a good, good chance if they just go in there and sell them like they know how to sell them. They got a, a good opportunity to do it. A couple of uh, local boys that could sure come in there and do it, which seems like it, it tends to happen sometimes, depending on where they're holding the contest. Jacob Massey and Tim Yoder, both uh, are Tennessee boys, and, and they've got a good chance to win it too. So, but I'll be out there. Uh, we're all going to be in a tent pretty much. They've got kind of a smaller sales arena where they're going to be having that at the Dixon Livestock. And, uh, and they're trying to keep uh, the crowd down a little bit. Not that any of us are worried about it, but just the optics of the whole deal. So uh, they're going to have a big tent out there, and they'll probably be just as fun in the tent. But uh, looking forward to doing that. Of course, this past week we talked mostly about the cyber attack that, that happened against JBS. Uh, and the IT systems in North America and Australia uh, struggled to get our, our slaughter back, but we had a 98,000 head uh, harvest day on Saturday, so they were back up going, and, and some of your others were going too. Did a lot to catch up some. Uh, we had a disappointing week of of, uh, of uh, inspected slaughter, but still, it wasn't the worst, and I think we're past it now. And it didn't 
destroy the market, which is the main thing. Of course, uh, we got a lot of volatility in, your, volatility in your futures, but it didn't kill the fat cow of market. Of course, we've been carrying on with, with charity bids here lately, but uh, and your cash uh, feeder cattle market was higher. So, uh, got through this black swan pretty well. Let's talk about your futures through the week. June live cattle futures, Monday was a holiday. Tuesday down 232. Wednesday up 357. Big time recovery there. Thursday down 35. Friday up a nickel. June live cattle futures ended the week at 116.82. That was up 95 cents for the week. August contract 118.07 down 53 cents. August feeder cattle. Monday was the Memorial Day holiday. Tuesday down 220, uh, and some of that was was due to your your grains, uh, and they were volatile through the week. Wednesday up 317. That was due to your corn market going down. Thursday was up 62 cents, and then Friday a little profit taken maybe there down 302 with your August feeder cattle contract, which is very very important. Uh, in the whole scheme of things and for the whole year on a lot of people's operations. August feeder cattle ended the week at 149.92, down $1.43. September 152.75, down 77 cents. Talk about your fat cattle trade through Thursday, only 49,400 head uh, were sold, negotiated in your five area feeding region. A lot of that due to JBS being down and them not being very active in the market. That compares to 73,900 through Thursday of last week and over 100,000 same week a year ago. Of course, we'll get the complete roundup on that on our next visit. But fat cattle through the week sold through Thursday up to sold from 118 to 121 live with a weighted average live steer price of 119.89, just a few pennies higher uh, than the the same than the end of last week too. So. It's just the charity bids. Uh, we didn't negotiate necessarily for these. We didn't. Uh, we didn't maneuver your packers into giving this. The packers are making so much money, twelve, thirteen hundred dollars a head at least, and uh, and they just have ran out of gall to try to break us back anymore on the price of fat cattle. Of course, they're still cranking up the box beef cutout values, but I mean the margins that they're working with are astronomical. But unevenly steady to firm is what your fat cattle market was. Your dress prices for steers and heifers 189 to 193. Your weighted average dress steer price up through Thursday was 190.73, just a few pennies higher than than last week. But did have a little bit more clean up trade on Friday, but still uh, disappointing movements in all your five areas. Iowa about a thousand head on Friday, 23,700 head for the week. Uh, live price was 120 to 120 and a half, which is right along with what they were bringing all week, and 190 to 191 dressed. Nebraska only 700 head on Friday, about 17,000 for the week, which is very disappointing for Nebraska. Uh, and the only price they quoted on Friday was 190 dressed. Kansas about 2,000 on Friday, 9,000 is all for the for the week, and, and a lot of that due to JBS being out, like I said. 120 live price steady with what they've done all week. Texas 2300 on Friday, only 5700 for the week and another 120 market there. Colorado didn't print any information uh, for last week due to confidentiality. That's another thing we're, that we're looking at working on uh, with some of these changes that we're trying to get here within the industry. But if you're if you're worried about whether NCBA is going to stay hooked. Uh, on uh, on the, the group uh, statement that they had after the meeting of truce. Don't worry, tripped another two or three triggers this week on light movement, but I guess they could say it was all because of the black swan of uh, JBS being down and then and, and not count that as one, but uh, you know I don't know why you'd want to do that. Still get your box speed cutout values. For the week, all of last week, the weighted average on choice cuts, 338. 56. Wow. That was up another $8.92 compared to the weighted average from the previous week. And it was even a pinch higher than that to end the week at, at almost 340. 338.98. Uh, you select your weighted average on all of last week's trade. 310.80 for select. Up 746 compared to the weighted average from the previous week. 
Again, your your late uh, latest quote on Friday afternoon was higher yet at 311.73, and just over 500 loads of cuts, grinds, and trimming, and it's just been kind of a a low movement like that. And and your your packers completely control that market. I I hear people saying they want to tie our fat cattle to your box beef. Well, it sounds good on the surface, like a lot of things do, but it's not a negotiated market. It, it, the Packers set those prices, and then your your wholesale buyers either either take them or they don't. And and if they don't, you know, likely it, it's they're going to get retribution, kind of like uh, uh, you know your 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 feedlot guys. But tell you what, it, it's I don't think it's a good thing to just to, to you know to, to dally up to if, if we want to get a better price. We need more negotiated trade, and if we mandated a minimum percentage of that. Uh, on your week's kill for all your major packers, then you could let your feedlots do the negotiating and, and they would have a whole lot more leverage and we would still be able to make our own market instead of be market takers. Your slaughter for last week, like I said, it was disappointing, but we had that big Saturday, 538000 for last week, which was down 91000 from the previous week and down 90,000 from the same week a year ago, but we feared it could have been a lot worse than that. So, and I think we're back online now and should have a good week this week. How about your feeder cattle market, your real time index on DV auction? Ended the week at 138.45. That was up a dollar and 30 cents compared to the end of the previous week with no big high volume Monday sales except for the special in Russell, Iowa, and it was a barn burner there. But uh, your cash feeders through the week and, and kind of holiday shortened week with no Monday sales were still steady to $4 higher on most all classes there. Spots more than that. Uh, look at some of your big sales late in the week. How about a Saturday sale that's really good and I mention, mention them all the time. Fort Scott livestock market there in Fort Scott, Kansas. 2400 head and, and your market was sharply higher than the light holiday run that they had uh, at the previous sale. But look at this market report out of Fort Scott, Kansas. Look at your best tested weights of steers. 271 head of the eight weight steers averaged 862 at 135.54. 463 head of the nine weight yearling steers averaged 957 at 130.18. Both of those were sharply higher, but like I said, you know, the week before was Memorial Day weekend. They weren't going to have a big sale there and wasn't well tested. Going to give you some individual quotes from around the circuit. A sale barn that just recently uh, got hooked up with DV Auction and we're, and we're getting their information in here. And I was really surprised that they had uh, these bigger drafts coming through. But Edina Livestock Market there in uh, Edina, Missouri. That's northern Missouri up there. It's not the yellow brick road, but uh, but Highway 6 ain't too bad on the northern part of, of Missouri going across there, and you got several big time markets that are close to it. But in Edina, Missouri, 152 head, 776 pound steers bring $146. Pretty good price. How about bluegrass stockyards in Campbellsville, Kentucky? on a string of Holstein steer calves, 133 head of the black and whites there, averaged 498 pounds at 120.50. Pretty good quote on those. But your best quote that I saw anywhere late last week and your Zach Tran top quote for the day, come out of Mankato Livestock. Neil Beret, he's here vying for the championship. He's got as good a chance as anybody. Saw him nail his uh, interview there earlier today. 57 head Mankato, 868 pound steers, bring 145.50. That's your feeder flash for Monday.